This is the first video since cutting my hair that I'm deciding to go like full Cleopatra. But I feel like Cleopatra could have been a Mercury in Capricorn. So it's fitting. <laughs> Hola my beautiful lotus flowers, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're into nerding out on everything astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation, this is a community for you. Today we're talking all about having Mercury in Capricorn and what this means is that at the exact time you were born or whoever you're watching this for was born, Mercury the planet was moving through the zodiac constellation of Capricorn at that exact moment of your birth. And if you're not quite sure what the energy of Mercury entails in astrology, then I will have a pre-recorded clip that comes before the video talking about Mercury's energy and what that means. So be sure that you're watching that before proceeding to watch the rest of the video. After that, we will talk about some general traits that people with this placement may have, and we'll finish the video off with a couple empowering tips for people who have this placement, or if you know somebody who does, then those tips might help you know how to add to their life more positively as well so I won't just throw the traits at you and be like yeah this is how you are and deal with it I'll actually have some tips for you at the end so be sure that you're watching all the way through now for a brief introduction to the planet Mercury in case you're not familiar with it Mercury is considered the quote-unquote messenger planet in astrology ruling over thought communication how information is mentally processed our intellect, routines, and our mental instincts. Mercury is actually the ruler of two zodiac signs, both Gemini and Virgo. Gemini is an air sign and Virgo is an earth sign. Wherever Mercury is at in your natal chart will tell you how you express yourself in regards to what Mercury rules over, such as how you communicate, how you think, etc. But it is very important to pay attention to whether Mercury was retrograde at the time you were born, as this can definitely alter how you express your Mercury placement. And the way that you identify that is there will be a little RX symbol next to your planet. If you're looking at a birth chart that provides this information, you'll see a little retrograde symbol next to this planet symbol, and that will tell you if it was retrograde at the time you were born. This can manifest for so many different ways for so many different people so I won't be talking about if the planet is retrograde but a lot of times the traits I talk about a lot of opposite traits can manifest for this person like for example say the mercury placement usually makes the person really good at communication well if it's retrograde then there's potential that maybe you struggle a lot with communication instead so keep that in mind now for general traits of somebody who has mercury and capricorn before we talk about them it's important to remember that capricorn is the cardinal earth sign ruled by saturn and symbolized by the goat Number one, they pride themselves on looking at situations realistically, cautiously, and intellectually. If you didn't already know, Saturn is known as the father figure of the planets, being the planet of traditions, structures, and limitations. And this isn't necessarily to say that Saturn is a negative planet in astrology, but it is the strict adult you need in order to keep reality in check when all the other planets might be going wild. Saturn brings us back to reality and that is exactly the type of trait that channels into Capricorns because again, Capricorns are ruled by Saturn. So when Saturn meets Mercury, planet of thought and communication, this creates a person who naturally thinks realistically and efficiently about situations. Although to some people they might seem like a real party pooper, this is the type of person who you can count on to solve just about any predicament that you might be in as this is what they excel at doing. Not only do they excel at keeping things in order and planning and all of that, they're also really good at having this natural sense of responsibility and authority over other people. So like I said, Saturn is kind of the father figure of the planets and this definitely channels into a Mercury and Capricorn as well. The way that they think about situations and the way that they respond to them is going to revolve around a lot around having the sense of responsibility, feeling like they have to be the one 
that is the mature adult in the situation. They're the one who has to clean up messes, whether they're their own messes or other people's, if, if it affects them directly. If it's a mess that they can't be bothered to clean up, then they won't clean it up. But if it affects them directly, if it happens on their watch, then they do feel that sense of responsibility, kind of like a parent. Number two, this placement isn't afraid to say what they mean and mean what they say. Capricorn is one of the cardinal signs, meaning that they tend to have a natural sense of leadership and initiative. So when you have a cardinal Mercury sign, the person's likely to be someone that isn't afraid to say what they think and say it bluntly and straightforwardly. With Mercury and Capricorn specifically, someone who already has a more logical, rigid thought process, they aren't usually the type that can be bothered to beat around the bush or sugarcoat anything. Again, they also think efficiently and to them, it's not efficient to sugarcoat or beat around the bush. They want to get straight to it when they communicate. Now, with saying that, it may seem natural that they're a good communicator because they communicate quite honestly and bluntly, right? But in fact, that can be what kind of hinders them when it comes to communication. And Mercury in Capricorn isn't necessarily like a difficult placement, but this can be a placement that struggles with the way that they verbally speak to others. Most of the time, this shows up as them just communicating what they think is necessary and nothing else. So this can sometimes lead to them communicating very dryly, very... Uh, void of any like typical courtesy or manners um, in other people's eyes and it can just really cause them to seem a bit cold and silent because they in their mind they're like well I mean I told you what you wanted to know so I don't know what else I need to say to you you know anything else would be a waste of time anything else to them is just random extra information that does not absolutely need to be communicated unless you ask them something regarding that information so with that being said they're really not ones for just idle chit chat with people they don't care for the fluff they just want to keep it moving third Oftentimes, this person is extremely patient with a strong sense of commitment towards what they know that they want. Unlike some of the mutable Mercury signs, such as Mercury and Sagittarius, which can have a hard time pinning down one plan or one thing at a time, Mercury and Capricorn is quite the opposite. In fact, it can be really tough to get them to think about anything else once they have fixated on their own plan. Their mentality is one of a determined earth sign. Earth signs are known for being steadfast and resourceful in their own ways. So having a cardinal earth mercury sign means that this person thinks about everything in regards to the long-term position in their lives. They are not going to want to waste any time or any energy on anything that does not directly correlate to this grand plan that they have for themselves. And although many of the earth signs channel this kind of nature differently, when it comes to Mercury and Capricorn specifically, we have somebody who is very slow moving because they take their plans very seriously. They take the process very seriously because that is what they're going to be investing their energy and their time into. So therefore they do not play around with it. They're not going to just set up some plan and then easily stray from it or get distracted from it or go off course or change it. Unlike other Mercury signs that are probably okay with adapting to different situations or whatever it may be, they are not. They would probably be really annoyed if they had to change their plan for any reason. So in that sense, they can often be quite stubborn when it comes to this vision or this idea that they have for their lives and what they're going after. But this is also what gives them the resilience and the sturdiness that's needed in order to achieve that plan. This is definitely one of the astrological placements that has an even greater chance. I mean, every astrological placement has a great chance to achieve what they want. Obviously, I believe in everybody. But Mercury and Capricorn definitely leans more towards having even greater ability to achieve what they want because of this very steadfast, not going anywhere, patient yet determined attitude that they have towards their goals.
If you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below if you are Mercury in Capricorn or know somebody who is, and be sure that you are heading over to my Patreon if you want in-depth astrological weekly readings, then those are all over there for you. Fourth, their minds are truly unwavering and strong in their own foundation, so they are not easily swayed, distracted, or discouraged. Tying into the previous trait is the fact that Capricorn is symbolized by the goat, more specifically the sea goat. And this is meant to symbolize a Capricorn's tenacity towards their goals, being able to make it through any terrain that stands as an obstacle along the way. Like I mentioned before, having Mercury in Capricorn usually means that you are extremely set on something and extremely committed to it once you have decided on it. Once you've decided on an action plan, on a thing, on a situation, on a person, you are committed to sticking it out until the end. And this is really what causes a lot of people with Mercury with this Mercury placement, but with Capricorn placements in general, it causes them to really become like the ultimate workhorse. Or I guess you could say work goat. <laughs> and this is why they cannot be bothered by anything that does not directly correlate with the plan. And again, I mentioned that earlier. And when it comes to them having the mindset of the goat, the mindset of no matter what happens, I'm going to make it through, I'm gonna get what I want. They are not the type that's easily changeable. If you know somebody who's Mercury and Capricorn, you might actually be frustrated with this type of trait because it can be hard to talk them out of something or give them advice or whatever it is that you may have tried to communicate to them about, they may be very closed off to it. But at the same time, people with this placement are also quite intelligent most of the time. Uh, they really like to, they take cold hard facts, research, um, traditional education, they take all of that quite seriously. So it's not unlike this placement to know what they're talking about. And this is what contributes to them being so confident in the plan that they're following and in the journey that they've set out on. Now, let's talk about a couple ways that somebody with Mercury and Capricorn can empower themselves. Number one, there can be a lack of passion in their decisions or actions, so it's important to keep their inner spark ignited and present in their lives. Obviously, the traits of any placements that I talk about can vary a lot depending on how other planets are interacting with that placement in your natal chart. So. Just remember that, but a lot of people with this placement may encounter feeling like they've lost a sense of meaning or true purpose in their lives because they get caught up in this constant wheel of overworking themselves. They really set out on that path that I talked about this whole video, this whole grand plan that they set up, this whole path that they decide to follow towards whatever it is they've set their sights on and it can really cause them to get stuck in a rut. And that plan may have started and it may have revolved around something that they do value or something that they are passionate about, but then it easily turns into something very rigid and cold as time goes on and they can kind of lose their way. They can lose the passion that initially ignited that and started them on that path. If you have this placement, if you've ever noticed yourself feeling this way, be sure that you are taking time and you're forcing yourself to do activities that reignite that inspiration and regenerate your soul so you can continue on that path and work even harder. The more that you allow yourself to keep that spark intact and keep that fire burning within you, then the more that that's gonna contribute positively to the life that you're trying to build. So remember, it is not a waste of time to do some things that you enjoy and things that re regenerate you, that re-energize you in order to move forward positively with this plan that you have. Number two, actively working on their own communication could greatly improve the quality of their lives, whether it's the communication with themselves, with other people, or both. Like I briefly mentioned earlier, it's not unlike this placement to have a difficult relationship with communication, and they may not even realize it. They may just think they're communicating fine and they're telling people what they need and that's it. Maybe the way that you speak to others kind of lacks 
civility or gentleness at some point, or maybe you just don't convey the emotional expression that you need to convey with others. Or maybe you're just a bit dismissive towards people in general. There can sometimes be with that authoritative mindset that this placement can have, there can sometimes be a dismissive nature about them when it comes to the way they interact with other people because they can think they're being childish or ridiculous or they think the interaction's unnecessary and you may kind of blow people off in that sense. So however this manifests for you, it could prove to add to your life positively if you become aware of that and work with it. So that way you can have better relationships with those that you care about because Obviously, this, <laughs> this is a placement that does care about somebody and those that you care about probably do mean a lot to you, but you may not realize that sometimes you're communicating quite coldly with those people, but not only other people, but with yourself as well. Sometimes Mercury and Capricorns can be a little bit on the pessimistic side or they can kind of be too harsh with themselves. They may be harsh with other people as well because again, they don't want to waste time and energy on unnecessary things. So when it comes to themselves, I feel like they are constantly picking away at how hard they've worked, how well they've done, whether they've made enough progress, how much value they've added to their own lives. And they can start to put everything under this super hyper-focused lens. Everything that they do and say comes under this really huge lens because their brain, since we're talking about Mercury, again, we're talking about the mind and the mental process, they're constantly seeing what in their life has added something to their life, what in their life is a waste of time, and that can sometimes, they can sometimes turn the focus towards themselves. And they can be like, oh, how am I contributing? What am I doing? It can be like someone just chipping away at you and degrading you slowly. And sometimes they can do this to themselves. They can be a complete rock star and think that they haven't done enough. And this also comes from the fact that a lot of times people with this placement think with a lot of humility. They can tend to take a very humble, modest stance. And that comes from the down to earth quality that they may have being an earth mercury. So they may think in a very humble way. And even though this can be quite an attractive trait for them to have, and it can make people really like them because they, they speak with humility, it can also be a double-edged sword because they can be too modest to the point of degrading themselves or being a bit insecure about the way that they've contributed to their own lives. I know that sounds kind of weird, but if you have this placement, maybe this is making sense to you. Maybe this is ringing a bell. Ultimately, you need to start practicing speaking to yourself with love and reassurance. And this may seem like a really weird foreign concept to some of you, <laughs> but start thinking about these questions. What makes you feel taken care of? And when do you feel most confident about yourself? And because this placement might tend to be a bit more private about their deeper emotional expression, I would recommend to pick up journaling so that way you don't have to talk to anybody but a piece of paper and you can just write down these things. You can write about some of the reasons that you're so hard on yourself. You know, you can ask yourself this question, journal, journal with this question in mind. Why am I so hard on myself and what can I do to ease my own judgment of myself? What can I do to begin changing this narrative so it's a more positive reinforcing one to myself? Because the more positive reinforcement you have towards yourself and the more confidence and self-care that you build, then the more that you're going to be able to contribute to your own lives. The more rich your life is going to be, the more successful you're going to be in daily life and in the grand plan that you have. So remember, taking care of yourself, reigniting your spark, like we said in the previous tip, none of that is a waste of time because in the end, it's going to make you even more of the boss that you want to be. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, 
hit the subscribe button and the bell and head over to Patreon so you can get weekly in-depth astrology readings from me and head over to the Blue Lotus Facebook community where we talk more about using astrology and spirituality for self-transformation. But if that's not enough, then you can head over to my Instagram at Marissa LeBlue for a more personal side of my journey. And you can watch these videos if you haven't already because they'll help you so much more on your astrological and spiritual journey. Thank you so much again for watching and until I see you in the next video, adios.